Welcome back to another panel company video. Uh, this one's following on from a lot of the product knowledge ones that we've been doing. Um, this one is all about trims, what trims we do, how they're used, how they're not meant to be used, uh, and how to fit them. So everything from internal corners to ends and quadrants, we're gonna cover everything in this video. So by the end of it, you should be an absolute trim legend. So we'll start at the end. And what I mean by that is end cap. Looks like this That's a profile from the side. As you can see, it's angled back slightly to give a bit of a pinch on the panel. Um, the reason I said start at the end is because some people call it a starter. Some people call it a U-channel. We call it an end cap. It's, you know what it is. The purpose of an end cap, there's a couple of different uses. If you're only going, say, halfway up a wall, the end cap sits on the top, has a nice finish. Same way if you're only going halfway across a wall. I'll show you that again. A third use for it, it's not as recommended as the other two, but you can use it actually at the, at the bottom. So like, that obviously that'll give you a, a nice finish across the bottom not quite as, re as as recommended because you can get sort of uh, a bit of debris and stuff on the edge of the trim there as it builds up across the bottom so not so thoroughly recommended um, a quick tip if you are finished you happen to finish on a full panel you will have this tongue sticking off the end a quick tip is to Slice that off, and then you'll get a much deeper penetration into the trim, which will obviously mean it's more waterproof. Right, moving on. Internal corner. Um, internal corner looks like this. It's sort of similar to a W shape. Um, anyone with any sort of DIY knowledge should be able to figure out how it works, but don't worry, I'm going to explain to you now. Um, the purpose of an internal corner is obviously for an internal corner, hence its name. So where two walls meet, and it is only at a 90 degree angle, that obviously fits in like that. And then your panels slide in like that. So everything sits inside the trim. Obviously, you can put a little bit of silicon in there as well, and you have this nice reveal down the centre, just making your corners easier to finish. There's no need for any silicon or anything like that, anything that's going to gather mould over time. Um, and that's why we'd recommend the internal corners. External corner. Looks like this. Sort of like an A profile. Funnily enough, the external corner is the opposite of the internal corner. External corner is exactly the same sort of thing. Wherever two, two walls meet on, a, on an outer corner, the panels slide in like that from either side. I'll show you the internals of it. So obviously you've got nice full deep penetration into the uh, trim. So it's a good seal and it just uh, neatens the corner up again. There's no need for any silicon or anything nasty that's going to go, uh, go mouldy over time. External rigid, or often known as just an angle or an L, L trim. Oh God, there's so many different names for these things. Again, available in white, black or silver. All the trims I should mention are actually available in aluminium as well. Um, various different colors, bright silver, anthracite. There may be some new colors coming soon, so keep a lookout for that. But um, this obviously is just a retrofit trim. So once you've got, um, what we recommend these for is for round a window sill. So uh, imagine you've clad the inside of your uh, window sill, or obviously you've just clad up to the front of it. That will then sit on the top and just provide a, uh, a neat finish on the, on the end. The reason we recommend these for round windows as opposed to that one 
is because it's a little bit square, more square, which makes it easier to mitre in the corners, obviously, where it meets in the, uh, the corners of the window. Um, this can be a nightmare to mitre, especially with the, uh, the flappy things on the back. That is just a nice, easy, straight mitre. And obviously around the windows, you're not going to be spraying water at the, at the windowsill from the shower. So it doesn't need quite as much protection from moisture. H-trim. Again, many different names. Joiner, uh, H-joining trim, H-join. I think someone has even called this a T-bar. And you can sort of see why it does sort of form a T. But that way it also forms a h um, these um, are not used very often, but what they are used for is for joining two boards on the end. Let's say, because obviously the standard size for our panels is 2.7 meters. If you've got a four meter or five meter wide room, you, 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 one option is to buy <laughs> cladding that is five meters long, which is not only very expensive, but it's also very difficult to transport without damaging it because it's just so big and awkward. The way around that is to use a H-trim. So let's turn your head upside down for a second and imagine this is a ceiling. Uh, so you've got 2.5 coming in from this side, 2.5 coming in from that side, and then down the center, you just have the H-trim, which joins the two together. Obviously you won't see that gap, there we are. So with the H-trim, it provides a neat uh, and sort of easy way to span gaps that are larger um, or longer than the full length of the panel. H-trims also work for um, height as well. If uh, you're lucky enough to live in, a, in a, a, an old fancy Edwardian or Victorian house with 10 foot, 12 foot high ceilings, Obviously the 2.7 is never going to reach your ceiling, especially if you're doing the walls. So you can then also use a H-trim all the way around the perimeter of the room to extend the height up to whatever you need it to be. And again, it's, uh, it's decorative, simple, elegant. Job done. Coving. Coving is meant to go around the ceiling where the wall panels and ceiling panels meet. Again, it provides a, uh, a decent junction between the two. It can be used either way around. So let's say one year you've man you decided to clad your ceiling and then a year later you decide I'm going to redo the walls. So you can then stick the coving to the ceiling like that and then the wall panel slides up into the coving like that. I will show this. I will try and show this joint on the other angle. So stick, stick that to there. Stick that to there. That slides in there. And obviously, other way around, if you do, do your walls first, then the coving sticks to the wall. And then your ceiling panel slides in there. One advantage of the coving is it allows for irregularities in the wall. So if you've got, um, obviously if your room's not perfectly square, um, if you've got a funny angle in your room, if you, oh, you know, um, it allows that much, which is about 15 millimeters. So you've got 15 mil there, 15 mil on the opposite side of the room. That gives you 30 millimeters to basically make mistakes. Not that we ever do make mistakes, but if you happen to cut something a little bit short, you know you've got at least 30 mil of cover, just in case. Finally, we've got a quadrant. Um, anyone that's done any sort of tiling before, stop, first of all. You don't need tiles anymore. But uh, you've probably seen these. Uh, we do only do these in one size, which is this 19 millimeter one. Uh, you may have seen them smaller or larger, etc. But um, that is, again, an alternative to the coving. Um, obviously, it is just a retrofit. It doesn't, you know, there's no slots or anything for the, uh, the cladding. And that is literally just a 90 degree that sticks on like that and just, once again, neatens up every joint. 
gives a nice finish. You can use it, you can use it on internal corners, you can use it vertically on an internal. Let's say you, you put your cladding in, you chose not to use trims, but then you think, ah, actually, I don't like that gap. Ooh. This is incredibly difficult. Let's say you put your, put your shower wall stuff in, uh, you decided not to use trims initially, or you just didn't know they were available. You can use this as a retrofit to sort of neaten that gap up on a vertical. You can use it along the the bottom where it meets the floor. Um, I don't know, say you're keeping your existing floor in, um, you've tucked tiles off and it's, there's, there's a gap around the edge. You've got a lot of play with that. Obviously you've got about 10 millimeters of play so you can cover any gaps. That also allows for expansion, which is really important with um, LVT, laminate, SPC flooring, all the flooring that we provide. It is recommended to use a five to eight millimeter expansion gap all the way around. So uh, that will cover that and still allow it to, to expand. Okay, so that's our trim demo done. Um, you can stick any of those trims to any of our PVC cladding with either solvent-free paint grip or if you're in a hurry and you don't want your trims to move, maximum torque. Trims can be cut fairly easily with a Stanley knife shaped however you need it to, mitered, etc. all that sort of stuff. Thanks for joining us for another video. Um, I hope that was educational and answered any questions you've got. Obviously, if you do have any further questions about trims, cladding, flooring, any of the products we do, you've been on YouTube before, you know where you can leave your questions and comments. Get in touch, send us any questions, tell us what you want to know, and we will answer them either in a video like this or just send you back an email with more information on cladding, how to fit it, the benefits, and what it can do for you. Like and subscribe.